so yeah, p played junior football through till I was about 15, 16. Um, it was uh, in the Claremont um, zone uh, in some of their development squads and that. It sort of didn't really grow to be particularly uh, big in for, for, for the football physique. So I uh, picked up umpiring around about 16. My dad sort of suggested I go down and earn some pocket money. And uh, yeah, so started off in the North Suburban Junior Football League around about 16 years of age, yeah. So transitioned out of um, junior football into um, amateur football for a couple of seasons and then was invited down, I think, at 19 to the, um, the academy. Um, and that was sort of run by Wayne, Wayne French and um, Darren Starsevich at the time. Um, and that was exceptional, really um, fast paced 12 months to really get you up to speed to umpire Waffle Colts footy, and I think I sort of jagged a Colts game towards the end of the season. I remember running my first Colts game with Mark Fussell at, at uh, Lathlane Park. Yeah, still have the game ball from, from my first game, so signed by both the coaches, so I think Stan Magro and Steve Turner, um, and it was a nice gesture. I think after the after-match function, I, they got up and gave me the footy. I mean, umpiring in the NT was a great step, a great season to sort of fast track my, my umpiring. Um, so I did it at the end of my first season of league footy. Um, and it was just more games under the belt. Um, different different brand of footy. I think um, obviously the weather comes into it a lot. It's a lot, lot hotter and it gets very slick with the humidity up there. Um, it's a fast paced. Um, lots of um, very talented in, indigenous players, so, so it's a quick, it's a different sort of brand of football, um, uh, but certainly one that I, I enjoyed a lot and I think I, I got a lot out of that season, not just, I think, um, umpiring growth from the perspective of um, skills and things like that, but, but personal growth as well. In front of about 9,000 people, it's a really good um, Swans team coming through, so some of the young young guys like um, Jeff Garlett and Nick Nadanui and uh, Chris Yaron, those sort of guys were coming up and they were just transitioning into AFL footy um, and the West Perth team was pretty strong. So I did that game with um, Jeff Delgleish and Dean Margetts. Um, it's a memorable game of footy, sort of less than a kick in it. Um, but yeah, the thing that was probably, that is most notable about that game was it was sort of, uh, the Waffles version of, of Siren Gate. So um, as is typical at some of our league venues, the siren probably wasn't quite up to standard and um, you know, 9,000 people, we don't normally get that, that sort of crowd. And so there's plenty of noise um, going on and we were finding it difficult to hear the siren all day. Um, and I remember speaking about it at, at three quarter time with the boys saying, you know, we're saying, let's make sure we listen out for it, for each other. Um, and little did we know that um, there's also a netball facility at the arena adjacent to the, to the ground. So um, I think there was 36 seconds to go, something like that in the last quarter, less than a kick in it, balls on the half forward flank, same side as the netball is, and um, the netball siren goes off. Uh, we, we thought it was the, uh, the end of the game. Um, so did most of the fans who piled on the ground. Swans are in the grand final. Um, and we were only to find out that Teddy Roberts, the football manager, came, came running down um, to let us know, guys, <laughs> the game's still going on. So, um, yeah, we had, to, had security around us. We had to clear the field. Um, and we, we obviously didn't know how much time was left at the time. But um, I do remember um, Dino sort of moseying over to, to Rod Willett and making sure he was had his mug on the telly and letting everyone know what was what was going on. So he's one of the few umpires I think to be um, to be interviewed uh, while while time was still still going in the middle of a quarter. So yeah, pretty pretty memorable uh, finish to my first final. I mean, it was a long journey for me. I'd done um, three consecutive reserves grand finals and then I'd, I'd missed out in, in 010 um, and yeah 20, 2011 I think it was just the culmination of um, a lot of hard hard years of, of work. Um, what do I remember? I don't remember a hell of a lot about the day. Those things sort of tend to be a, a bit of a, a blur. You're just focused in on, on what you're doing but certainly um, yeah it was 
it was great to get the nod um, for my first grand final, yeah. But yeah, it's pretty cutthroat, so it was at the time. I trialled three times, um, and you go through the whole pre-season with the AFL guys, and then you're thrown into the NAB Cup with the, the rule changes and things like that that they're, they're um, bringing in at the start of the season. So, um, and at the end of that process, you know, you do your, your fitness time trials and your, your whole pre-season, and at the end of that process after the games, it's there's usually, at the, well, there was one or two spots each year, so it's a tough tough process but a great one to to go through yeah so i think about i think about the highlights of scott's umpiring journey i think uh, i could talk about the statistics but i think i think the statistics speak for themselves and i think what they do represent is they represent sustained excellence over a long period of time well, scotty um, and i umpired a fair bit of football together through the sort of middle part of the last decade um, we umpired obviously a lot of grand finals together um, as an umpire scotty was really dependable um, a really hard worker, an excellent teammate, um, and good fun when you got past that pretty serious veneer. Yeah, I guess very professional. Um, more so off the field, I feel like I can probably talk more to his dedication and just how much work he put into like training. So um, the resilience in him, I think, is just outstanding. Um, you know, he just never gave up that kind of attitude and just worked 110% always. Um, so I think about um, Scott's, the, the best attributes or what Scott, Scott brought to um, the game or what Scott, Scott brought to umpiring was uh, a level of professionalism, a, the level of dedication, uh, a level of intensity at times. And I think that what they really were were representations of his deep care for the game. No, that caught me off guard. I mean, I certainly knew I was retiring at the end of 2015 after my career, and, and Scotty was, to my mind, still you know, really strong in, in, in his um, ability to, to make really good decisions. He was really fit. Um, but when it hits you, it hits you. I certainly understand that feeling. So no, it was, it was a complete shock to me when that off-season he announced he retired. Scott, uh, congratulations. I'm so excited you've been acknowledged um, for your contribution, for your dedication, for your hard work over a long period of time, and for your deep care, not just for the game, but for the broader umpiring group. Um, your wise, thoughtful counsel and our friendship, uh, you know, I great, I'm, I'm very grateful for. Um, you've been, a, been an awesome friend, um, and I hope you have a wonderful night and, and cherish uh, all of um, the acknowledgement that you've earned and deserved. Uh, congratulations, Scotty, on being inducted into the Hall of Fame tonight. Just an amazing achievement. Really proud of you and everything that you achieved um, here with the Want Floor. You're a really good role model to the field umpires down here. Um, you gave so much dedication and gave up so much of your time for this association. I know how much love that you have for this association. Uh, we've got, you've got so many great friendships that have formed out of it. Um, yeah, so just really proud of you. I know mum and dad are really proud of you as well and I hope you enjoy your night. Uh, Scotty, congratulations mate on your induction to the Hall of Fame. Uh, wonderful achievement. The cherry on the top of, uh, of the cake for you mate. Uh, congratulations. Uh, enjoy the evening surrounded by your friends and your family. Uh, you're an absolute legend, mate, and this just confirms it. I look forward to seeing that caricature. Well done, mate.